Hey YouTubers, what are we going to do today? We're going to take this photo and we're going to do quite a few things. But what we are going to do is play with, see this right here? We're going to do a Portrait Pro edit and a Luminar edit. And we're going to see what they look like and the differences. Stay tuned. Before I start this video, I just want to tell you guys that I am a Luminar partner. I just wanted to compare Portrait Pro and Luminar. I will tell you right off the bat that it is like comparing apples and oranges. The thing is, is that with Portrait Pro, you are just using a software that only edits portraits. And Luminar is a software that does portraits, landscapes, the sky replace and other stuff. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I'm just saying that one does a lot of stuff and for a different price range, if you want to get all the things that Luminar does, you have to pay around 300 and some dollars with Portrait Pro. Now I'm not saying Portrait Pro is more expensive for the same thing. That's another thing I want to tell you is because Portrait Pro is very elaborate in each of those things. It's also a software that uses artificial intelligence to come up with its conclusions, but it is a bit more elaborate in the amount of adjustments you can make. That being said, I decided to edit a portrait within Photoshop and then export a layer out to Luminar. And then after that, mute that layer after that was done and re-export a layer out in Portrait Pro so we can look at the differences. And the last thing I wanna say is that I am way more well-versed within Luminar. I am introduction to Portrait Pro. I'm just learning how it works, but you're gonna see that some of the results are instantaneous and fantastic as well. So let's get into it now and see what we can do. And here is what we are editing. It is a photo of Pauline. Here we are. We're going to start with this uh, photo of Pauline. Uh, I have a video behind the scenes of this. I will link you guys to it so that you can see what I did. Let's go through this really quick. The shot was taken with a Canon 6D and a Sigma 50 millimeter, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to check it out. <clears throat> First, we're going to try Luminar, and then after that, we're going to go into Portrait Pro 19 and compare the two and what sort of results we get. Let's do it. So Shift, Control, Alt, E, flattens the layer. For now, I'll call it Luminar. Luminar. And we'll duplicate that. Uh, Control, J. And we're going to call this Portrait Pro. Portrait Pro. So I'm going to do an edit in each and see what we get. So we'll go Luminar, Filter, Skylum Software, Luminar 4. Export that out, see what happens. So I'm going to go here to the smiley face, which is the portrait tab right here. And the first thing we're going to do is go into AI Skin Enhancer. I'm going to take the slider up and bring it to there. Wait a little while. And uh, that's some pretty darn nice. Uh, let's. I just want to show you guys how good that is. There you go. When we go in, here's the before and after. That's what was what I did in Photoshop, and this is what I get in Luminar. It's pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good. And I'm not going to touch that. So I'm done in that 87%. If you guys want to go all the way to 100, you can. You get a bit more of a. 80s airbrush look so it's up to you i just bring it down because i like to keep that tackiness out of there and try to keep it as natural as possible so 87 has been the magical number for me uh, 87 187 on the motherfucking gab that's what it's done to the skin it's done a darn good job if you look at that really closely that's the type of effect you get there you go let's zoom back out now let's go into Portrait Enhancer. Shift, 
showing you the before and the after makes a nice shot the eyes are just accentuated enough and we will go into what's called the Orton effect another Orton effect which is other is also a nice effect that gives you some drama makes it look like you're shooting a bit through through cotton as I would say I like type number two remember when you go into Orton effect there are two types type one and type two when you go into type two you can get some really cool stuff brings in a softness that's a lot of fun and I just wanted to tell you that there it is the Orton effect I am not gonna do that because I do want to compare the two softwares so what we're looking at today is just the retouching of the shot now I will press apply let that apply to the image it will become a layer within Photoshop there we go and that's the before and that's the after Wow look at that that looks great so I'm gonna pull that off okay we'll go back to the before and we'll go into portrait pro and we're gonna take this layer and play with it in portrait pro and look at the differences see what we think anthropics portrait pro this is portrait pro 19 uh, now what I do find that in portrait pro they what they do is they find the face analyze what they're looking at and they do a lot of pre-adjustments I guess there's probably a place where you can adjust uh, some of the settings what you want to do and it'll actually uh, uh, decide what it's going to do initially but for now here we go so here it's analyzed the face seeing where the lips are the nose it knows where everything is and I find that kind of cool because the software is basic is, is telling you you know what I know where things are uh, <clears throat> Delete current. Are you sure? No, cancel. What the hell is that? Okay, no, that face is fine. Yeah. I'm going to go through this real quick so you guys can see what's going on. It's already done some stuff. Let's look at the before only. Look at the before and after. You can see that it's already analyzed and done a few things. Not to my liking, but it doesn't matter. So first we're going to do face sculpt. I'm just going to show you guys what it's done. If I pull this master fader up, it's done a few things to the face to bring the eyes more even together so that they're more symmetrical and uh, it's done a couple of other things you can face shape you can shape the top look at that you can actually change the top of the head I'm gonna play with actual each one so you guys can see what's going on eyes right here see what it does it actually takes the eyes and tries to bring them in an even plane you can widen the eyes make them bigger like in luminar you can shape the mouth so you can actually change the expression first of all I will not eye widen so we can compare afterwards but you can change the expression you can plump the lips so if you do have a model that doesn't have voluminous lips you can do that I don't want to do that I don't want to do that okay nose you can actually change the bridge of the nose neck you can pull the neck up and make the neck longer lens correct in this case I use a 50 millimeter so I'm fine I didn't get any distortion but anyone who's used a wide angle and come up close to a portrait will realize that there's a lot of aberration and distortion in lens so it's quite important to see what you're doing so there you go head forward I think what it's doing is making the perspective look like the body is back when you go head forward and here you go this thing right here this slider here called expression you can go and play it with and it'll actually bring in a smile can bring in a frown look at that that's nuts surprise widens the eyes interest brings up the eyebrows <laughs> it's nuts thoughtful with the eyes brings them in <laughs> That's quite nuts. Pretty darn good. Pretty surprising because you, you know these these are one stop sliders, and you can do some pretty amazing stuff. So let's go play with some of these. You can play with around the eyes, thin wrinkles, fine shadow. There's like so many, so many things. Remove pores. We'll take away the pores. Remove shine. She has some shine here. Let's see how what it does to that. No, it's not doing that too well. Remove grease. Base, it, it, it's I think what it's doing is emulating powder uh, sharpen I never touch oh, sharpen ever you can trim your eyebrows so what I'm gonna do is pull up the master fade and let it just affect the skin in general which it's done a great job look at the before and look at the after 
You can see the smoothness is pretty darn nice. In Portrait Pro, you can really change the expression. It's really specifically done for portraits. So you can play with the expression of the person. You can do all kinds of stuff. And it uh, it's pretty darn incredible what you can do. You also in Portrait Pro have presets. So let's say you just say, okay, I want something that's maximum sculpt where you've sculpted the face a lot. Here's what would happen. Uh, standard right here. That's what you get when, when I open the plugin. Uh, no, like you can go to no sculpt here. Now watch this. I'm going to go into the glamorous ones. Here's glamorous one is really changing the face to the point where you can't even recognize what the face looks like. I mean, it's making the eyes so big too. You know, none of this is nice. I mean, it's not even human. I personally don't find, but I think, uh, I would go for a standard thing like this, like I just did. It's fine. You can pull the master fade up, but there you go. So after you're done in this one, file return from plugin. It's saving the image and it's making a layer. There you go. So that's what Portrait Pro gives us. And let's look at what Luminar gives us because that's Portrait Pro. Let me just put Luminar on. This is Luminar. Portrait Pro, Luminar, Portrait Pro, Luminar. I personally like Luminar better in this situation, but again, I want to tell you guys, I'm not that familiar yet with Portrait Pro, and uh, but from my impression so far is that I really think that if you are just doing portraits, I would strongly, strongly suggest getting Portrait Pro. I have the impression that once you do learn how the software works, the ins and outs, you can have a ton more control on the actual portrait that you're doing. Whereas with Luminar, since it's also made for landscape and other types of photos, it isn't specialized in just portraits. So I guess the conclusion is the following. Portrait Pro, if you are just someone who does just portraits, and Luminar, if you are someone who might do portraits, landscape, and other types of photos. Also, if you are someone who likes to stay a bit natural, you might also want to consider Luminar even for portraits because it does do a good job naturally for portraits and there's not a lot of sliders. If you want to keep it simple, Luminar might make a bit more sense for you. Portrait Pro gets a bit more elaborate on what you can do. Do you want quick results? Do you want customizable results? Customizable for portraits, Portrait Pro, simplicity, quick, Luminar. There you go. That's my conclusion. You guys love having you here. Like, share, subscribe. And don't forget, everybody, keep on making something from nothing. <laughs>